All right. I'm not even going to open the floor to meters. I'm going to dive right into the real meat. Battery monitors. This is the number one thing that I believe that I do on boats. Not because it gives us a lot of revenue, but because it is absolutely information is power. And this takes away the whole mystery of what's happening to your batteries. So a battery monitor, like in here, is actually going to be measuring voltage at the battery. And it's actually going to be measuring current going in and out of the battery bank. Huge. Current is incredibly, incredibly important because with that information, the battery monitor is actually able to average over time what is the battery capacity in percentage. And it's actually able to track what is the battery. It could be 90%, 95%, 50%. And it's also going to tell you, oh, right now you're discharging. You're charging at whatever. It's sort of like a speedometer. So a battery monitor is both an odometer, tells you how much you've taken out, right? how much distance you've covered with your batteries, and it also tells you the rate at which you're going. You're going to bed. Why are your batteries being drawn to 30 amps? What are you doing? Why? Why? Oh, I left the chart plotter on and the radar is on, and I have two sounders on. Oh, my nav system suite is on. Totally forgot. You want to know what the, your batteries are not ever expressing to you how they feel or how they're doing unless you have a battery monitor. So battery monitors are incredible devices. They cost between 250, 300, maybe if you go all out, four, 450. Of course, there's no end if you go in super integrated. But something like that costs maybe $250. <clears throat> Fuel gauge for your batteries, state of charge of the batteries. And remember that question I was saying? <clears throat> oh, I don't know how much amp hours am I using a day? How am I gonna size my battery bank? How am I gonna size my solar array? All this magical information that you have no idea what it is, this will tell you. This will tell you what your amp hour budget is. It's going to tell you. You just simply log it every day. You find an average, and you're like, you know, on average, I use 225 amp hours. Then you can start sizing everything from there. There's all different models. Uh, Victron is a big one. Xantrax is a big one. Blue Seas makes a really nice one. There's all of the choices, but those are predominantly the ones we go for. Um, and what I like about it is it takes the whole guesswork out of knowing where your batteries are. There's no more, do you think we're going to be able to last another day here? It's like, well, the batteries are at 85%. We're good. So everyone on board doesn't have to follow away. My gut feeling is we're good. Because I can tell you how many times I hear from boaters or partners of boaters that tell me the thing that I find the most annoying is waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning, my, inverter is, my inverter is beeping, meaning low power, the refrigerators have died, and now I'm thawing my food in the refrigerator that you just provided in source on a long trip, and I gotta start the generators in the middle of the night when I'm in an anchorage which has a little bit of serenity and there's neighbors, potentially sailors, who are less than understanding about a generator being run, and, you like, and you're a social person. In the morning you like to look eye to eye at certain people when you do your tender ride. There is nothing, you might not care about it, but your partner most likely does. And that embarrassing moment can be avoided with this. Because then you know, you're like, you know what, we got to run the generator for longer tonight. Because we're going to be 12, 14 hours without a generator. And we need enough power. We need about 20% to last the night. And right now, we don't have enough. So you start knowing what your usage is. And it takes away the magic out of managing your batteries. Lastly on this, what I would say, which is really interesting, when you have that, you have so much power. When you talk to a technician, someone who knows batteries, the information is so powerful for diagnosing what's happening to your batteries and knowing what's going on because you don't need a voltmeter. You're telling me all this information. You're sending me this stuff on a data sheet. You're taking a picture. You're sending it to me. I'm like, okay, here's what's happening. This is that, that. You, you can actually have people provide you remote support. If you call someone, you say, I think my batteries are dead. Help. The, the only answer could be, well, I need to go on board. I mean, but if you have that, I've helped so many boaters in Desolation Sound Sunshine Coast, Gulf Islands, Browns, outside of Vancouver Island, they tell me, I'm like, okay, here's what's going on. Here's what's happening. Look for a dead short. There's probably this. There's probably that. Oh, no, you're fine. Oh, the meter's off. Oh, you, you have actually intelligence. Without this, you're like, something's not right. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with that. Can't. Right? No power. It's like a chart. You need data. You need tests. 
I need that sort of information to be able to narrow down what the problem is. So well suited for deep cycle batteries. Um, there's problems with installs. People obviously don't read the manual clearly, but that's okay. If you read the manual, you follow the manual, it will work. And the big thing I think which is amazing is once you have voltage right at the battery, if your panel has no power and I see battery voltage at the battery, I know that the problem is between the batteries and the panel. So you might be in pandemonium panic. I lost my batteries. Everything's falling apart. My vacation is ruined. But the problem is that one of the fuses or a switch between your panel and the batteries has blown or was turned off. And then suddenly I know, well, if you've got power of the batteries, the problem is between the batteries and the panel. No problem. Let's work through it. And then suddenly you're like, oh, I was downstairs changing an oil filter and I was working on my engine and I turned the battery switches and then we went away and I was checking and then I came back and then my house battery was dead and I'm like, oh my God, what's happening? Oh. And you're like, whoa, it's okay. You got a battery monitor. What's the battery voltage? Where do I see that? Oh, I'm on the panel at zero. I'm like, no, no, that's not the battery. That's battery at the panel. What's battery voltage at the battery? Oh, it's 12.8, okay. Well, what did you change in the engine room? Oh yeah, I changed all the switches off because I was changing. Okay, well, let's go back. Boom, boom. And then suddenly, you know, everyone's a hero. Vacation's not ruined. So it's great. All right. So that is um, monitoring. Yeah. Um, yeah, questions? No, a comment. Um, Belmar has come up with a new smart case. Yeah, I saw that. State of charge. State of charge. Where those things I find, I, I, I've had an ADC for 20 years, and often they drifts. Wonky. Yeah, it drifts. I'm going to keep that for later for the sake of time, but yes, promising future. There's innovation happening, believe it or not, in all this stuff. It is absolutely possible. Um, yeah, there, there, is, there are things that are happening. Here's, here's in a general rule that I have with innovation for Marine. As a general rule, as you can see, I'm a geek head, right? I love technology. But on my boat, when I'm in the middle of nowhere, I'm a slow adopter. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Let's see how it works. There are some boaters that don't mind being first adopters, early adopters, and we're like, but we warn. You know, you're going to be the first person to put this on your boat. I've never tried. We're trying, but be open. Things might not go as well as the brochure promised. And then you let it, you know, so you don't want to be a first adopter always. You have to open eyes, right? Know that if you're a first adopter, you're going to go in there and maybe do it as a backup. Like if I was going to put one of those, I'd keep my old one on and i put the new one in because it can be in parallel. See how it goes. And once you have enough of a track record and there's enough first adopters out there that have proven that the marketing is true, because that's the key, proven that the marketing is true, then you're willing to adopt that on your boat. But unfortunately, not all marketing arms of all companies are necessarily completely understand the limitations of their products. Sometimes they go to market sooner than they should for various reasons. And as a boater, you don't necessarily want to be the one doing their product testing. That actually happens, by the way, with electronics, with a lot of different products. So there is a balance to find between going new and waiting a little bit to see what the market actually flushes out. One more question on the monitor. That, that shunt, how does it actually measure that? Because uh, when I mean, you've got, got all the big cables, you have yeah. to cut the big cables with the shunt. Yeah, you absolutely have to. You have to cut the big cable and put it into, yeah. The shunt is like that. You can also have what's called a CT, a current transformer, which measures through magnetic flux. There's two ways, but battery monitors, for the most part, are actually working through shunts. Shunts have a, a known resistance, V equals IR. If you know what a resistance is, and you measure the voltage across, you will be able to calculate what the current is. And that's what a shunt is. A current transformer is a device that measures flux gate. Every, every wire actually emits a magnetic flux. And if you put a current transformer, there's do, people will use the word donuts on more advanced boats like North Ovens, Flemings, and stuff like that, where the owners completely go nuts. That's why those boats are like five times the price of a normal boat, where they monitor everything. They're trying to go to Star Trek levels they'll have current transformers on everything. Now, my dream, but financially not possible. It's just crazy, right? It's just, yeah. Is this a uh, percentage? Yeah. So if you have a boat that you're not using uh, at the false speed here for two weeks, it'll, it's 
sensitive enough to, for day to day? To oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The question is, is your battery monitor going to show you percentage diminishing over time if your battery, if you're, if, for example, you don't, you're not on flow charging and you're disconnected? Absolutely. It's going to go 99, depending on what your ghost loads are. Some boats have ghost loads that are a lot more than you think they are, and this monitor will tell you. You're like, I have all my switches off. This is a good way to know that MacGyver was on your boat. I have all my switches off, and I'm drawing five amps. What the hell? I'm like, oh, MacGyver was on your boat. He looked at the DC panel and was like, well, that's too confusing. I'm going to go straight to the battery because the battery is what I understand. And then you look at the battery, and sure enough, there's like, I've seen boats, no joke, 15 circuits, unswitched, unfused on a battery. Like, there's not enough posts, they start moving to the other positive posts. They're like, I got this. Like, I'm going right to the battery. The panel, that's hard. And then they're all switched, unfused, and then you can't shut off those circuits. And they're like, well, how am I drawing so much? It's like, well, yeah, because they, no space on the breaker panel. They can't be bothered to try to integrate. They give up. And I call those ghost loads. Loads that are unswitched and unknown. And that takes time. The battery monitor would tell you about those loads. Not individually, but it would tell you you have a problem. Can tell I love this device? A little bit? $250, $300, right? So think about the value that you get out of a battery monitor. How long does it take you to install it? I'd say about three hours on average. Three hours, maybe four, two, depending. On average, three. The key, the key, which is, and this is the key, I have countless, countless, countless owners that have the shunt wired in the wrong place. And then we start getting in these argumentative uh, discussions that their refrigerator is, draws no power. I've had that. My fridge is so efficient, it doesn't draw power when it's on. Because the shunt doesn't capture it, therefore it draws no power. I have had owners that argue with me that their heaters are magic. They draw no power either. They're just fuel. The, the fans and the fuel pump are completely power free. They don't run. Like crazy heated arguments. I'm like, oh God. Seriously, I'm inside voice. I'm like, I gotta be patient. I'm like, I know that's what the monitor says, but did you ever consider that potentially the monitor is not wired properly? Now that's the scary part of being about a boat owner. And I learned this the hard way. Because when I bought my boat years ago, I assumed that like my car, everything was done right. And then I realized that things aren't right on a boat. Very few people have that bar of doing things properly. It took years to undo all the MacGyvers, all the craziness that was done on my boat to have it be what it should be. So if something doesn't seem right, something doesn't feels like magic, it's sort of like outside of the realm of normal, it's because it's probably not giving you right data, or it's wrong, or something's not normal. So <laughs> battery monitors, the location of the shunt is absolutely, utterly critical. And I cannot tell you how many boats have it installed in the wrong location. How many banks can you monitor? Just one. Just one. Only one bank. And you only need to because you only should only have one house bank, for the most part. Exceptions, possible, but most people should only have one house battery bank.